First up today, here's an email from one of our listeners. This is from John. And Adriel, he says, I'm curious, what do you think the gospel is? I hear the word used a lot without a definition, and I'm not sure if everyone who uses it is on the same page. I appreciate this question, and it's so important for us in the church to define those words that we use over and over again that we can just sort of take for granted. And certainly there's no word that's more important than the word gospel. What is the gospel? Um, the, the first thing I would want to say to you is that it's good news. It's the announcement of good news. In fact, you see this in places like Isaiah chapter 52, where actually that word gospel in the Greek translation of the Old Testament is is used. It, it was a, a proclamation. You, you think of when somebody brings good news to you that, that leads to rejoicing, to singing. And in particular, the good news that we're thinking about is the good news of salvation for the people of God, the announcement of of deliverance, of the reign of God and the rescue of God's people. It has to do with what God did in time, in history for us. It's not something that we do or live even. We are not the gospel. You are not the gospel. You don't live the gospel, if you will. Our lives are an implication of what God accomplished in the gospel for his people. A great passage of scripture for you to go to as you think about the gospel and understanding it correctly is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There the apostle Paul makes it absolutely clear. He says, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now, right there, right, the gospel message has to do with salvation. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I know it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So it's this announcement of good news that relates to your personal salvation, uh, your, your faith in Jesus Christ. And he goes on there in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 15, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. In other words, the gospel message centers around Jesus' redemptive work, that he lived and that he died for your sins, for our sins, in accordance with the holy scriptures, and that he didn't just stay dead, but that he conquered death. He rose again from the dead, just as the scriptures said on the third day, and then he appeared to the disciples and ascended into heaven. This happened. This is a historical reality, and it demands something from each and every one of us. God calls all people everywhere to repent in light of the fact that he has conquered death, and he commands all people everywhere uh, to embrace this good news, the good news that your sins can be washed away, that you can have a personal relationship with God in the hope of eternal life, the resurrection of the body through not what you do, but what God has done. That is uh, the gospel, and that really is core Christianity as well.